Hi everyone, this video I'm going to show you how to add a background image that kind of fills it so the text can go on top. I'll also show you how to darken the image so that you can have text over the top that's legible. All right, let's get going. All right, to add the background image, you need to first pick a background image. Okay, so again, if you want a free image for your background, for your particular club that you're building, go to unsplash.com and type in and find something. It's better if it's got a dark background. Well, it doesn't have to be. If you're gonna have a light background like this, you're probably gonna have to have dark text on it. And um, I looked for something for me that had a dark background. Like this would be good because the text will appear nicely on it. Okay, so to add your uh, background image, okay, it's best to add it to the assets first okay so i'm going to go to my assets tab here okay and you either hit the upload to upload it or do what i do find it and image two here i'm going to just drag in it's going to upload itself up there it's a really big file i'll show you how to kind of get these smaller later on but nice big file and what we're going to do is we add the background graphic not as like its own unit it's not like an image that we push behind everything like in other design programs what we do is this section here this helpful little section, okay, that we named Hero. We're gonna say you have a background. We've done background before. Look down here, there's a background color of gray. Actually, what I want is, can you see it says image and gradient? See this plus here, background. I wanna add R in image, which is cool, or gradient, okay, if you wanna do that. And where it says image, it says choose image. I'm gonna click that. It bumps open the assets panel, and you're gonna say this one, please. You're gonna give it a sec and it's gonna be massive. Yours might be small, depends on the size. Okay, so to start with, mine's on custom, okay? Which means really it's the height and width that it was, you know, that I downloaded it, it's massive. The one you probably want is cover, okay? There's custom, which you can type in any old size. You can say, I want it to be, you know, uh, 30 pixels by 30 pixels. Okay, you could do that. It's very common though, just to go to cover. And what cover does is actually, it stretches the image to fit whatever the size of the section is. So if I decide that I'm gonna add two P tags, watch this, if I copy this P tag by Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, and then paste it, Command or Control V. Can you see that? I'm add extra, but this background goes, I'm bigger, so I'm gonna show more. And I paste it again, look at that. It just keeps filling the background, it covers it. I can't see any of this side of the image now, which is a bit of a pain. You might be like, hmm, you know, the central part of this design is this lovely river. I want it to be in the middle. And you can do some changes to it. So remember, have your section selected because that's where the background is applied. And over here in background, I'm gonna click on my image, okay? And you've got some options. So you can say, can you see position? It's saying, I'm gonna start at the top left and spread out. You could say, actually, just go from the middle. So when it does resize, it's gonna have the center of the image in the middle. Let's delete this. So now a little bit of the bottom is gone, a little bit of the top, a little bit of the sides, well, quite a lot of the sides. So that's the kind of trade-off. And you'd be like, hey, I want it to be pixel perfect. This image is perfect, it's a product shot, it needs to work perfectly. Now, the trouble with being like that for web design is the amount of devices that you need to show it on. Um, so responsive design is a term used for showing on the moment desktop. And check out this one here. What does this look like on a tablet? Okay. It's a whole different size. The format's different. So the content resizes and readjusts to you know adapt to that size. Um, so does the image. So if you get it perfect on desktop, it's not gonna look perfect on tablet, okay? You're not gonna be able to see every single pixel and get it framed perfectly. Um, unlike kind of print design where you can be really perfect, you need to be you need to be 90% good <laughs> for web design, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, get down to here. Look, it only shows a tiny bit of it. Okay, I'll show you how to fix all these different breakpoints as we go along, but it's just something to be careful of when you are designing things, um, especially background images. Cover's good because it adapts for all these different device sizes. And we're only designing for like a generic desktop. You've seen how many laptops and big screens and little screens are out there. There's just so many that your site needs to be responsive to them all. So let's click on our hero section again and look at a couple of other things before we go. So I'm gonna click on my image again. So cover constrain is more like it will show the image completely. The the rock down the bottom here, it will squeeze it into the spice provided. Okay, if I make it on mobile now, it will squeeze in and then tile. I don't use it very much. Okay, if you don't like the tiling, you can turn the tiling off. So constrain, so it's the, you know, it fits everything in the window and you can say, actually, I want it to not tile. So tile forever, you can tile it left and right, tile it up and down, no tiling. But it's not what I want, I want it to cover. 
Thank you, Cover. All right, the next thing I want to do is darken it. The moment it's a bit light, you can darken your images um, with CSS, with these styles. Okay, you could go to Photoshop or Figma or XD or Illustrator, whatever you're using to design, Canva, whatever it is, Microsoft Paint. <laughs> you can definitely not darken it in Microsoft Paint. Um, but we need to darken it, so there's a little trick you can do. I'll show you. So we've got an uh, image on our background. You can actually have more than one thing on the background. So at the moment we've got an image in the background, but let's have another thing. That's, that's why there's a plus. You can say, I wanna add another one. What do you wanna add? I wanna add not an image, because I already got one of those, not a gradient or a linear gradient, not a radial one, I want this one. I want a solid color, please. Okay, and that solid color is going to be, I'm gonna click on it, and I'm not sure if this remembers it from last time I did it, or it's the, this is the default, but anyway. I wanna pick a dark color, okay? It might be a tinted black, what I'm going to do is drag it right into the corner here. Okay, black 000000, zero, 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 zero is the um, CSS color for black. FFF, FFF was white, remember? Okay, and what we can do is we can use this one called alpha. Okay, at the moment it's 50%. That's the slider. Transparency. They call it alpha on web design to be fancy. Okay, but we know it as opacity or transparency. Okay, you can decide on how opaque versus how transparent it is. So I'm going to find something where I can read my text because we want a nice good contrast between the text and the background. All right, it's good enough for me. I'm going to click off. And if you're like, that didn't work for me, what might have happened is I'm going to click on my section again. Is Can you see there's actually a layer ordered here? Your one might be underneath. It might be on the top. You want it to be on the top, really, with a bit of transparency and the image on below. There you go. Well, one last thing I made a note here to show you is I've been using the undo, command Z. I went straight to the shortcuts. Here's a manual way. Look, undo, redo. Okay, if you do close down Webflow and come back to it, those undos have gone. Okay, but you can undo redo using the buttons. All right, that is it. On to the next video. That, my friend, is the end of the video. Uh, but not the end of the course. Uh, the video you just watched, um, it is a small part of my larger course called Webflow Essentials. So if you enjoyed the video, my teaching style, there'll be a card up here you can click or a link in the description. Okay, and come join me for the full course. Uh, like the video as well if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff, but hopefully see you in the course. Bye.